What was the last time that a piece of media made you genuinely feel something? No, I don't mean made you frustrated. I don't mean that your mood was lowered by a bad game of Valorant. What was the last time a game or other piece of media really made you reflect on your own mortality, the good and the bad in your life, and experiences and the beauty of the world that surrounds us, a world in which our time is incredibly finite? That painful feeling you get deep in your gut from the ending of a good book, reflecting on a breakup, or missing a parent who's no longer there, is what philosophers like to call existential angst. That feeling of frustration that consumes us just because of what we are as mortal human beings with finite lives. For me, Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the saddest and most deeply existential forms of media I've ever consumed. And it achieves this because the developers recognize the cause of existential crisis, I think better than a lot of other similar attempts. The developers of Cyberpunk 2077 seem to have recognized that there is no existential dread without beauty. And the way in which they make this point is remarkably effective and I think also unpretentious. You believe you have cheated death. It is death that has cheated you. This line always seemed to me like the central narrative thread of Cyberpunk 2077. But for me, at the time I played it, it seemed to take on a double meaning. Lockdowns, ambulances, sounding through the streets, mass social dysfunction. You can avoid death, but you haven't beaten death. You might think you're cheating death, but are you really cheating yourself? out of what life you have in your avoidance of death. In Cyberpunk, the player's actions are contextualized, not as part of the protagonist's life, but as inevitable events leading up to their deaths. You just may only recognize this later on. You can linger around the open world as much as you like, doing every side quest. But to quote Cormac McCarthy, the shadow of the axe hangs over every joy. You are dying and every single action in the game is contextualized by this fact. For those of you who have not played the game, our main character V has three choices of origin. You can choose to be a street kid, a nomad, or a corporate executive. But whichever one you choose, they will eventually end up with a good buddy. A good buddy with whom they will commit a crime, the implications of which they cannot understand. At the end of which they will end up dead albeit for the fact that the glorified USB stick they stole contained Kinu Reeves. Having Kinu Reeves stuck on a USB stick inside your head obviously instantly revives you because plot. One problem though with having Kinu Reeves stuck inside your head is that he's killing you. As his identity begins to slowly but inevitably eat away at your own, you will fight the inevitable, make your choices, find new friends, enemies, and lovers. But all of these events, these struggles and triumphs, will ultimately be sealed by your own death. You can run away with your lover and die outside of Night City. You can solo YOLO your way into Arasaka headquarters and die in a blaze of glory. At one point, the game even gives you the option to take the easy way out. Yes, this is an RPG game that will give you the option of not fighting the final fight and just giving up due to the hopelessness of your situation. If you're curious, let's go through some of the reasons why I think Cyberpunk 2077 is so effective in portraying its existentialism and the important relationship existentialism has to beauty. First of all, get a life. If you're going to have a game that plays on existential themes, you need the characters to have a life in the first place. The game is keen to present your character with a life and a background Old Man Banjo, you're thinking. Yeah, it's an RPG. Duh, you need a background. And to some extent, I agree. I was not initially completely pleased with the three options and how long those short stories went on for. But given the time constraints the devs were under, I do feel that those origin stories still go on to play some role in grounding your character, i.e. grounding your character before you end up with Johnny Silverhand on a USB stick stuck inside your head. You had a life. It wasn't Johnny Silverhand's life. You were a person. And now you're in the process of being a not person. 
and a not person is a no thing. The other thing the game is very successful at is the consistency of its narrative focus. The game sticks heavily and perhaps is sometimes too much on the nose with its theme. Death, beauty, and the transience of life. Would you rather die a hero or go out for all time in a blaze of glory? This reflects both the game's philosophy but also its roots as a tabletop RPG in which your characters tend to be, how should I put this, impermeant, like bring two sheets to a game. So you're gonna die. In this way, the guys at Project Red really understood the world of cyberpunk, and more importantly, they channeled the game's original mechanics into the philosophy of its narrative. Life is temporary for all of us, but in Night City, it's even more so. Our character is not special, other than the fact that Keanu Reeves lives inside his head. I would feel very special if Keanu Reeves lived inside, because that man is beautiful. But anyways, the other aspect that the team at Project Red seemed to do so well on was the aesthetic. Even the people who dislike the game with fervor have to admit that its aesthetic is one of the most beautiful in video game history. This emphasis on style and beauty is so crucial to the narrative. I don't have any proof for this, but I strongly suspect that the writers of the narrative were inspired by the writings of Japanese author Yukio Mishima, or at least people that were inspired by and inspired by him. He was a Japanese nationalist of samurai descent who bemoaned the loss of Japanese samurai culture. He once said that for a samurai, their sense of beauty was always connected with death. Mishima himself died of seppuku in a staged storming of a Japanese military base after finalizing his final novel. His own death intended to seal his legacy and avoid the decay of the body he had worked so many years to perfect. Cyberpunk takes these themes to over 9,000, one might say. In a world where bodily perfection and self-enhancement are out of control, people literally losing themselves and their mind in a quest for self-perfection through cybernetics. And also in a world where there's no honor. How then can you, the player, find a beautiful death in a world like this. And this gets us on to what I think is the most important aspect of cyberpunk's success narratively. In fact, heck, I love talking so much about Samurai and Cyberpunk 2077 so much I may do a follow-up video on this. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments and subscribe. Uh, anyways, enough shilling, on to my next point. And this is, I think, the most important aspect of how cyberpunk succeeds in its narrative, friendship. A lot of modern media lately is frightened of making characters into tropes. So instead, they've turned to making them into very unique people, and I use unique with scare quotes, that are also deeply unlikable. Cyberpunk, despite its many bugs and gameplay flaws, has characters that I genuinely like. I like them enough that in the game's finale, when my own life is on the line, I feel that I would rather not risk theirs if possible. The characters have real relationships, real flaws, real insecurities that can be overcome as the bonds of friendship grow. You can't get the beautiful death of a samurai in Night City. It's too late for that, both historically and spiritually. But you can be remembered by those whose lives you've affected. And the game is keen to emphasize this aspect. It goes so far that the ending sequence reflects upon the lives of those you've affected. If you choose the easy way out, they are destroyed, saddened, and more than a little angry. If you make better choices, they are sad, they miss you, but they are thankful for the role you played in their lives. This is the ultimate genius of the beautiful existentialism of Cyberpunk 2077. You can't escape death, even if you'd never ended up taking that risky job a stray bullet would have gotten you anyways, someday, sooner or later. You also can't die the beautiful death of the samurai that are constantly referenced in the game and in the titular rock band. While he may be in your head, you are V, not the legendary Johnny Silverhand. And the more you learn about him, his death wasn't so honorable either. But you can make your time in the world of cyberpunk beautiful, if not through your death or success at saving your own life but through the people in whose memories you will live on. 
you can make your time in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 a thing of beauty through those relationships, because a thing of beauty will never fade away.